What's up guys, Knight here. Today we have another video, the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Review. I know, the game has been out for like three weeks. I beat it about a week ago. I wanted to finish the game, sit on my thoughts. This is not a 100% review. This is my non-spoiler post-game finishing review for someone who did not play the original FF7. And now let's get right into it. Alright, so gameplay has been enhanced in almost every single aspect from Remake and Intermission. It's the same exact style of combat, but of course now there's even more abilities for old characters. Obviously much more abilities for new characters. There's better aerial combat. Cloud now has these range attacks that are like Mako Bursts. Aerith now has this Flying Familiar that may have been in the first game, I don't really remember. But the aerial combat is like one of the biggest new things in the game, because in Remake it practically was like non-existent, and if it was for some of the flying enemies, it kind of was like really shit. So now it's like 10 times better, Cloud can like teleport to the enemies, any character can really like teleport in a certain way depending on who you're playing as, but you now have new characters like Yuffie, who is a pretty damn good ranged character, probably the best in the game with her doppelganger windstorm combo. And Red 13 is now actually playable, since in Remake he was just a part of the party, but Red 13 is like this vengeance gauge tank kind of dude so if you get attacked with him he gets a vengeance gauge and it does like more damage I don't know I didn't really use red 13 and Kate Sith that much but they were fun when I did have to use them and then Kate Sith like I said he's an interesting character he takes some getting used to he's mostly like fun gimmicks but it's there and you have to use them for certain periods so you should play the tutorial for his character however I think he was fun when I had to use him he has like this luck based thing his weapons you can like blast his luck stat crazy high and hopefully you know get criticals with that or super high damage hits with that not to even mention all the other things like the synergy abilities the synergy skills and so with synergy abilities and synergy skills which are like this whole other thing that i can't even get into because it will take 10 minutes so synergy skills and abilities are basically what they sound like it's just for any two party members that you have on you can use a skill so it's like an attack a ranged attack a physical attack or even a guard and so this is now added into the game I think for the reason that if you don't have any ATB and you don't want to just spam the attack button, you can use these synergy skills whenever with whoever's in your party. And so basically it's just another avenue of attacking and just adding more combination to the game, which I think is great because spamming the same attack if you have no ATB can of course get boring and remake. And so now with these character abilities that are already added to the base characters like Cloud's Mako thing or Aerith's familiar, the synergy skills add like a whole third layer of everything. And I didn't really get used to them till like chapter four or five, but then later in the game I was like, oh, these are actually pretty good depending on which enemy you're fighting or depending on what situation you're in. So I'd recommend using them a bit more because if you're in a tough situation, it will definitely help you. And so along with the combat, of course, you have Materia. And the Materia system is like as fun as it was in Remake. It is just awesome that you can add a bunch of random shit on. And they have streamlined it in this game. So say you have a fire Materia and an ice Materia, they have combined them into one just because they added so many more that if you want to have a bunch of elements on, you're going to just be wasting four slots on four different elementals. So they have streamlined some of them. They have added a lot more in general that make the game more fun or kind of wacky. And so some examples is like the MP and the HP swap. So if I have 5,000 HP and I have 70 MP, my MP is now 5,000 and my HP is now 70. So they have some stuff like that that's like kind of useful depending on what situation you're in. And the game really has like a bunch of options for convenience in the combat with materia or just like upgrading things in the the folios and so that's what kind of makes it weird when there aren't any material loadouts because when you're playing the game you do switch your party members a lot whether it's just on your own will or for the main story or even for the side content so i feel like them having loadouts for your characters would be something that they either add in a update for the ps5 pro version if that will be a thing or for part three just because there's a lot of materia slots you can get up to like 16 materia slots in total which is a absolute shit ton and if you're going to do a specific like chadley vr battle or a main quest story or whatever you're doing and you need to switch it for every character and then switch it back it's a total pain in the ass and i know i don't think they want to purposely be doing that just because this game has so much quality of life and convenience and accessibility options for everything whether it's the overworld or combat or anything in general that this is a one miss that i'm just kind of shocked they got about or just didn't add in yet granted this really isn't an issue for me because when i was playing i didn't really switch my material around too much it was like a general set materia for everybody that i had you know of course cloud would change it around a bunch because i had a on or 
are some new abilities I wanted to upgrade. But everything was relatively the same on my normal playthrough, just because it really wasn't that hard of a game. Me doing all the side quest content along with the main story kind of made it so it was relatively challenging at times. The materia I had on, I could just, you know, use whatever I want and I'd still get through. But along with everything else, we have the folios. Like I said, it's the new upgrade system. And I think it was really cool. It, it's a more streamlined, like, tree from maybe FF10, from what I can remember from the most recent Final Fantasy game that had something like this. And it's really just, hey, you use your skill points from the manuscripts you find around the map and you can get new synergy abilities or you can get new synergy skills or you can get the level three limit break or you can get more health or more MP. It's like the really basic here's 5% more damage with this, here's 10% more damage with this that most games do. And granted, this isn't as nickel and diming as like a God of War does maybe or an MMO or some other games. So I think it's like a nice balance of, hey, here's 5% more of this, here's 10% more of this. And in the end, once you upgrade everything, if you do multiple playthroughs, you have 20% more HP or 20% more MP. And that really does add up with this game specifically. So I really like how it's done. It's also super accessible with changing what you want to upgrade because just a single click of a button whenever whenever you're playing the game, you can get rid of a single point that you upgraded or you can just reset your whole skill tree and you can do that for anybody at any point in the game. Like I said already, there's so many options with combat and gameplay that just you can change around shit whenever you want to. And I think that goes straight into the world map and the traversal. If you're playing the game and you want to get somewhere, you can just teleport anywhere. At some points of the game, they're like, hey, you got to use this to get to this point. But a couple chapters after or after you beat the game, you can just teleport anywhere you want, whenever you want. And even on your replaythroughs, now that I'm doing my second playthrough, you can teleport to any area you want in your new game plus run. Even if it's like technically not unlocked it in the main story. And this is something that a lot of games I don't think do because they think it will make the game easier or just tones the difficulty down or makes it better for like noobs. But for stuff like fast traveling and just convenience, they somehow managed to figure out like we know people want to move around this massive map and do all these things. Let's just let them fast travel to like almost every single point, whether it's a chocobo stop or a cache location or just a quest marker or a zip line or just any tiny notable thing on the map, they can fast travel there. And that doesn't take away challenge or the explorability. It just makes it easier and it makes it more fun because, oh, I don't have to spend 10 minutes walking to a certain location. And oh, if I do a side quest and I need to fetch something, I don't have to spend once again, 10 minutes walking there. Granted, there's not really any fetch quests in that game that I can remember, but it's just all there that make it so much easier to travel, let alone this doesn't even count the damn chocobos that you have in each area with a chocobo it has a different ability so you can climb walls or swim or you can fly at one point i'm like how did they somehow manage to do this so well like hamaguchi or kitase or whoever was figuring this out clearly knew what they were doing and, and clearly used things like witcher 3 and horizon zero dawn like they have already mentioned before and they and they put that into this game and they're like hey we don't have to reinvent the wheel of open world we don't have to reinvent the wheel of fast travel and, and whatever we're just gonna do what these games that are critically acclaimed to do and what they're best at and put it into our game. And another thing that I think they do great, which I'm going to like slow down on the ranting because I'm just ranting at this point, is that when you call your chocobo, if you are running in one direction and you call your chocobo, the chocobo basically runs up behind you and makes you like jump on it and you just keep moving. It's not like a situation in like a Zelda game and you know the older ones. You call your horse or your mount and you have to stop moving and you have to call them. And then when they get to you, you hop on and then you can move again. So it's like this three, four step process of calling them, waiting for them to come to you, hopping on them, then starting to run again, that you have to do that wastes like, you know, 10, 15 seconds, maybe five seconds, maybe eight. It doesn't really matter. It wastes just a tiny bit of time that makes you want to call your mount just a bit less because you could just spend that running or at least that's how I feel. And so in Rebirth, you don't do that. With the chocobos, you call them up and you can be running and they'll run and you'll hop on while you're running and you just keep running. You don't have to waste a single second to do anything like stopping moving or anything. It's just so convenient. It's really nice. And granted, the buggy, you have to stop to hop in because it's a fucking car. But still, even then, then just don't use the buggy. Like, just use the chocobos or just fast travel because you can fast travel. There's so many different options that if you don't like one option, there's at least two others that you have. And I think that's something that the game does really well is keeping the player immersed in the world and in the flow state. So not too stressed, not too bored. There's just enough things to do as side content. 
the main story honestly is is very it, it keeps going consistently and i and i don't think there's really any pacing issues with it and with the side content that they have in the world like the mog houses or the fiend fights or the life springs or getting all the towers it is all your basic open world stuff that you go do this go do this whatever fight these things but they do give you extra intel or it's not even that much stuff in retrospect that takes a while it's like oh quickly teleport there go do that and i think it's fun each area has different enemies has different ways that you can get to these life springs has different intel that you get from these life springs the mog huts have different mini games each time that are it's relatively the same thing but it's maybe a little harder with some extra unique things thrown in there the proto relic quest is this whole quest that's spanning across the whole game and it feels like this main story quest because it has characters from remake come in or it has you play mini games from remake or it has you play new mini games or it has you go to these new areas and the proto relic quest i think i will say is the best side quest in this game hands down i think most people would agree i also think it's one of the best side quests in a final fantasy game that i've ever done because it is just a full game spanning quest that goes from right in the first open world grasslands all the way to post beating the game you can do this shit afterwards which i did it afterwards because you got to be a high level for it but it, it's, it's it's huge and each region is just vastly different whether it's the chocobo you get the ability the chocobo has the side quests that are available everything feels so different other than you know the life springs and the fiend fights and the towers it's all the general same stuff to do in those areas but the areas themselves are vastly changing with all the things that you can do there and even then some of the things that you do in the regions that are the same like the fiend fights it's you have to do different stuff to get to those fiend fights or the enemies themselves are obviously going to be totally different there's a wide array of enemies in this game i think like 230 to be exact there's a shit ton and even if you get tired of doing these fiend fights in the life springs in each area you can then come back after the game and do them you can fast travel to do them or you could just skip them they they add a nice amount of content and i think they're worth it and i don't think it's just busy work i actually feel like it's expanding on the world and that's what the side quests also do the green side quests in this game have you the player cloud pair up with another party member and do these quests and so each time you complete a quest it will show you which party member you are with and they'll get an extra boost to their like relationship meter so you have like 36 quests in the game i think and so when you do all those they each focus on a party member and what that region has to offer and i think that greatly expands upon the characters interactions with each other and just how they interact with the world it's like stuff that is very tiny or you think would be very tiny and then you do the quest and you're like oh my god this is like great like i'm getting more character development for red 13 or barrett you learn about marlene and what marlene and him did when they were younger or even with tifa and what tifa and cloud experienced when they were kids or Aerith and what Aerith did when she was with her mom it's just like all these things all are contributing towards making this world feel more alive and more fun in the music the music is just like perfect a final fantasy game so they rarely miss on the music and they take stuff from remake in this and they make it like an overworld theme like hollow they have as an overworld theme for a part of the grasslands and i'm like holy shit this is like nostalgic quote unquote because i hear the hollow theme in the back but i'm just walking around this area by midgar and it just it's a beautiful song already and so they make it even better and then the boss themes are amazing and then the new stuff is amazing each some side quests have their own specific music like the Wow, wow, wow song is fucking amazing. And even then, some of the mini games have their own music. And there's just so much music in this game, they packed it full for a million different songs. I think there's like specifically 300 songs or something that they made for this game, which is wild, but it's all great. I'm not going to go too much in depth on this because it's a Final Fantasy game. And like, if you're playing an FF game and you've experienced the music in at least a couple of the games, you know that that shit goes hard all the time. All right, so mini games and post game content right before we get to the stories and the issues I had with the story in the game as a whole. And so there's mini games in the game. There are a shit ton of mini games in the game. I know some people have been complaining about, you know, how they throw them in the main quest or how there's too many or how some of them suck or how they're difficult. It doesn't matter. I think that almost all of them I had a great time with. Of course, when you're having 20 to 30 mini games in a video game, you're going to have at least two to three sinkers in there. Like, there's no way. You're going to go 30 for 30, 20 for 20, whatever, on extra minigame shit in a video game unless you're just the greatest creator of all time. Like, it's just not going to happen. No game is perfect, let alone if you're making so many different minigames. It, they're not going to cater to everybody, right? Some people don't want to use their brains. Some people really want to use their brains. Some people don't have hand-eye coordination. Some people just want to like, move along with the story. Some people don't like the aesthetic or the setting. Like, 
there's a lot, but I think that's what this game does best, is that they have a shit ton, so you will at least like five or six. Like, I liked almost all of them, and that doesn't even mention Queen's Blood, which is the new card game that they have for Seven Rebirth, and I do not, I do not like card games in really general, but in Final Fantasy, like Triple Triad, I don't like it. I've never really played the card games in any of the old FF games. I always just do the tutorial for them and play them if I have to for a main story or play them if I have to for like a secret item. But I almost always consistently skip them because I just don't think they're fun. In, in Queen's but I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot because it's Rebirth and I love FF7 Remake and whatever. But I was just like, I don't think I'm going to really love it, but I loved it. The game slowly teaches you new things, gives you new cards, and there's a shit ton of new cards. So by the end of the game, once you've played, you know, 20, 30 matches, you're like, oh my god, I think this is like actually great with these new abilities. This is really fun. At least that's what I thought. And it's just a fun time. And I really hope that they release like a standalone game or a DLC or something because I can't imagine they're going to create this like fun as hell card game and not have it in part three or put it in FF14 or something or expand upon it in some way that I can enjoy it outside of Rebirth because it really is fun as fuck. Most of the mini games in Rebirth are fun and I think a lot of them are just if you want to play them, you play them. If you don't want to play them, you don't have to play them. There's side quests that make you do them, but those are side quests. And even then, the side quests pretty much require, like, a bare minimum score. So even if, like, you physically can't do a game because your hand-eye coordination is bad or you have some sort of disability, you can usually get by pretty easily just by doing the bare minimum, which I think is really nice. All right, we're hitting 35 minutes on the video. We got post-game content. Post-game content, there's a lot of post-game content. I'm not going to go into it because it's spoilers, but there's Chadley fights. There's more than Chadley fights. There's Coliseum fights. There's, you know, secret bosses. There's some shit you can change customization-wise. There's chapter select. There's resetting chapters and, and looking at the play log. The play log is wild, which once you beat the game, you'll see the play log. But there's a bunch of shit in this play log and for the relationship for each character and just the differences. And it's, it's really cool. I think it's great. And also graphics. Graphics is amazing. I'm speedrunning this so we can get into the story because it's a long-ass video. The game looks beautiful. I played at 60 frames my whole playthrough. I was debating on graphics mode or performance mode, and I was like, you know what? 60 frames to me is like a lot more important than just a bit of fuzziness. And I think the game is doing its best on the PS5. But I think, honestly, the PS5 is doing what it can to run the game at 60 and doing what it can to run the game at 4K 30. So, not really many complaints with the visuals. But all right, I practically have been raving about the game for 37 minutes now. It's going to be edited down when I fully release this on YouTube. But I've been raving about it, saying all the good of the game. Not really that much bad, other than maybe like the materia slots. But there has been bad side quests. There are some bad mini games. There's some world map design that's kind of funky and obtuse with the mounting that Cloud can do. Uh, the jumping is kind of funky looking. And, you know, the paint, the yellow paint is an issue for me. But some people don't like that. So, of course, there are some misses in this game with the side cut content and whatnot but the story i haven't even touched on which i think personally the story was amazing so keep in mind before we go into the main story stuff i did all the side quests i did really everything i could before i beat the game so these side quests add a lot of extra character development or character moments for the party even the proto relic stuff add a lot of extra character moments for the party and you know party members that are not in this game that were in remake and so i think that has greatly enhanced the experience for me so i am basing this off of all of the story content in the game not just the main story so if you play the game and you skip everything and you do just the msq you probably won't like the game as much it really adds a lot but really straight up i loved it i absolutely really don't have any issues with the story throughout the whole game beside a little thing in the ending and i already had some knowledge of what happens in disc one of the original because you know just from me being on twitter i knew some names of characters or locations or of course i knew that Aerith dies in the original game i'm not saying she does or doesn't in rebirth i didn't really know about the barrett stuff prior to this game i knew that barrett had some big moment coming because the trailers that square enix show have a shit ton of spoilers in them so i was aware of some things but I absolutely love the story. The story is constantly, I think, even with me going out doing the side quests, it's constantly moving. I don't really feel any, like, lulls or any slow points in it at all. I think from Remake, what they took from it was that, okay, people really like 
the character interactions, these character moments, and they like the characters going to all these areas and doing all these things. And I know this is a remake. This is from the original game. This is how the original game did it. But you're constantly moving from one area to the next, and I don't think they do it too quick. They bring you to an area. They let you, you know, see what's going on with the area, get the story for the area, and then you can go to the next one. But if you stay back and do some of the side content, you can get more lore on that area itself, or even then they have mini games for the area. And even then, there is less chapters in Remake, but the game is massively larger in every aspect, whether it's story content-wise, side content-wise, just size of the game itself, 150 gigabytes, goddamn. But it, you don't really feel that because... They took out all the boring moments in Remake that padded out or, okay, follow this character through the sewer. I did not feel bored at all doing the main story or even the side stuff. I didn't feel like I was waiting for something to happen or I was like, okay, they're clearly doing this so that they can pad this section out. It, it was consistently moving area to area, which maybe feels too fast for some people. Maybe they want those areas to be expanded upon, but also keep in mind, this is part two. Like, we're going to go back to these areas, I assume, in part three. If, if we didn't go back to them in part three, because this is supposed to be, you know, its own game, you don't want to have three of these remake games coming out and like, okay, I need to play this other one for it to fully feel satisfying and good. Like, I think Rebirth stands alone as a great game, not making you be like, oh, okay, I can't wait to go back to Corel, or I can't wait to go back to, like, Gongaga in Part 3 because I feel like we didn't do enough there. Like, the game makes you feel you did a lot in that area. You explore the region. You talk to the people in the region. Good character moments in that region. And then you move on. FF7 is a character-driven game, full and full. Not to say the main story isn't interesting with Sephiroth and the robes, but the characters heavily carry it. Because when you're going to all these new places, you're like, oh, I wonder how Cloud will interact with Barrett. I wonder how Yuffie will interact with Barrett. I wonder how Tifa and Aerith will interact. I wonder how now Vincent and Sid and Kate Sith will interact. It is a massive cast, and you just love all of them. Even Vincent and Sid, who were barely with everybody throughout the latter half portion of the game, they still had way more moments that... I would have expected, whether it was in the MSQ or even just, like, side content shit. Like, I can't rave about the characters enough, and, that, and that's why I, I love this game so much, is that just, I feel connected to all these characters, especially with the emotional moments, like the Barrett in the damn Loveless play, the, dude, I can't go into spoilers, but my god, I was just tears in my eyes in the spectacle of just the gameplay of that portion, too, and, like I said, the Barrett stuff is just, cry. I cried so many times playing this game. I cried at least, I could count, seven or eight times in the last, like, five hours that I cried. But I could probably count ten times specifically that I cried throughout this whole game. Because it's just amazing. Like, tears of happiness, tears of sadness, tears of, like, amazement. Like, how is this game even real? And for someone who did not play the original, I know I keep saying it, I still have this great connection to it just because it, it's it's that good. The, the character moments are phenomenal, and Red 13 arc as well. I, 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 keep, I this, this game is huge. Like, I, this video, I don't know how long the final cut will be, but we're hitting 45 minutes, and I feel like there's so much I have left out, whether it's gameplay aspects or combat aspects or just talking about the music or just talking about the story, because the story is, there's a lot to unpack with the story. There is so many emotional moments with every character involving. It's, it's, just, it's, it's huge. But yeah, pretty much story. I loved it. I really, 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 really loved everything that they do with each character and how they feel with each other and how they feel with their backstories and their lore and how their emotional moments are handled. I will say there's some moments that you do and you're like, wow, that was really sad and you, and you, you, you know, you're, you're emotional, you, you're crying, whatever, and it will quickly jump to something that's like high octane action. And personally, I don't think that's a huge issue. They do it. A, a handful of times in this game and I wasn't really aware of it until people pointed it out to me and I was like oh okay I can kind of see that then so maybe this will be something that changes on my 100% playthrough on my second playthrough when I fully complete it again but as a first time go around I didn't really think that the sad moments the high octane moments really ruined anything for me I think it's like the high emotional point that you're at it, like, the adrenaline stays that whole time, so I was just very hype and excited and like, oh my god, this is so cool, and I'm so sad, and now I'm, like, defending this and this and this. So, that could be something that I, I do feel will change over time, but as of now, I thought it was okay, and I think it just added to the grander feel and the more intense feel of everything in, in general. 
but I don't think it really drastically took anything away from those moments. And aside from that, the only other complaint I have is the Zack stuff. No spoilers, of course, but I will say they drip feed it throughout the whole game. And I thought it was really intriguing and interesting, but then the latter half, maybe even the latter 20% of the game, they kind of just go all out, and it's a lot to take in. Not saying it's bad, I'm not also saying it's great. I really could do without it if it wasn't in the game, if Zack was not in the game, and, and that whole thing just didn't happen. I'd be like, okay, cool, that's fine, but it, it is in the game, so I don't think it's bad. I also don't think it's good. I think... It's a person-to-person -person thing uh, with him. I'm trying to be super vague just because, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But I, it, it, you got to kind of play the game yourself be, to experience it and see how you feel about it. I know some people who love it. I know some people who hate it. And that's also the ending. I know some people aren't fans of the ending because they do some stuff. <laughs> Being very vague, once again, it hit me emotionally how it needed to hit me. I was in and out of crying. I was sad. I was happy. I was, like, pissed. It was a crazy mix of emotions that will be even better on the second playthrough because there's a lot going on in the end. There's so much happening in that last, like, two, three hours of the game that there's no possible way anybody going through it a single time will be able to get everything out of it, whether that's the full emotions or your full thoughts or your full hatred or your full love. That you'll have to do it multiple times, even me watching people play it. I'm like, okay, I notice this more, or I feel like this, or I have these thoughts straightened out. It's something that you kind of have to experience yourself, and everything up until that last 5%, and then that's that's where it gets iffy with a lot of people. And, and, and personally for me, great still. I don't think there's that many problems other than, like I said, the Zack stuff. So take it what you will. I It's really, that's such a small amount of complaints for the massive massive amount of good things i have to say about the game it is honestly one of the most entertaining games that i have played not to say it's a perfect game but the feeling i had when i was playing was like this is this is perfect to me you know and i know there's issues and blah 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 so it's not perfect and get angry at that because i say it, saying it is perfect but it, it's a great game I, I fucking love it so much if you didn't like remake you pro you might still like rebirth i really think if you hated remake you could still Pick out a nice chunk of things Rebirth that you would enjoy. If you liked Remake, of course you should like Rebirth. Like, that's not even a question at that. So, they improved upon almost everything. Even Part 3, I can't even begin to imagine once again what they'll manage to do now with all of these assets and all of these things that they already have created. It's going to be an absolute massive game, triumphant game for the Final Fantasy series. And I hope, it, I, hope, I hope it goes well. We got a lot of things to do before then. We still got a lot of Rebirth to play. The game for me is a 9.9 .9 out of 10. One of my favorites of all time. Uh, it's got to be one of my favorite FF games. Maybe my favorite of all time. I got to let it sit a bit more, man, even though it's been a week. I got to give it more time. I got to play other things. And uh, yeah, it's great. Can't wait to get the 100%. Thank you, everybody, for all the support recently. Uh -huh. The ending reaction on my VODs channel hit like 22,000 views. Uh, it hit like 200 comments, and I don't want to brag about views because reaction content gets a lot of views on YouTube. It's very easy to get views with reaction content, so it's nothing that I like heavily edited or put work into. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who watched, commented, watching this video, subscribed on YouTube on this channel or the second channel, followed me on Twitch, came to the Twitch stream, came on to Twitter, replied to my posts, liked the posts, DMing me, uh, saying that you watched the reaction and you liked it. I've gotten a lot more of just everything from so many people since that went up, uh, and I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It actually uh, made me really emotional <laughs> the other day. Um, so thank you, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. I tried to make it you know, not too short, but also not too long, because holy fuck, this game has loads of things. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.